I came to Boston today to meet with the faculty of the Belfer Center, the International Security Academic Center think tanky thing at the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard. Meeting with the faculty there was national security dork heaven for me. It was very kind of them uh, to host me for the day. And at one point when we were talking today about the wars, one of the professors said, I'm not sure what the question is, to which the right answer is 17,000 more U.S. troops to Afghanistan right now. Excellent point, right? Big brains at Harvard. But I've sort of been gnawing on this all day since. And I do think there are some questions to which 17,000 more U.S. troops to Afghanistan could be the right answer. Questions like, how do we better ensure the safety of the 35,000 American troops who are already in Afghanistan? Or how do we nudge our troops in Afghanistan away from having to rely on airstrikes, which too often kill civilians, in favor of more troop-intensive but relatively more precise guy-with-gun missions? Here's another question to which 17,000 more U.S. troops to Afghanistan uh, could conceivably be the right answer. How does the new U.S. president make it look like we are committed to some kind of positive outcome in Afghanistan? How, do we, how, how does he make it look like Afghanistan is not Forgotistan anymore, even before he has announced or maybe even arrived at his plan for what he thinks the point of the war there now is? That is maybe a question to which 17,000 more U.S. troops to Afghanistan could conceivably be the answer. Could be the right answer if by right you mean understandable, if not right as in a good idea. Les Gelb, the foreign policy eminence Greece, who used to run the Council on Foreign Relations and has held senior posts in both defense and state, he wrote in the New York Times today that Afghanistan is President Obama's problem from hell. He says U.S. troops should instead be gradually withdrawn from Afghanistan and that the U.S. should redefine our goals there to be way less ambitious but maybe more realistic. Mr. Obama's goal, he says, is to ensure that Afghanistan is not a sanctuary for terrorists. But trying to eliminate the Taliban and Qaeda threat in Afghanistan is unattainable, while finding a way to live with, contain, and deter the Taliban is an achievable goal. Living with the Taliban, how's that for inspiring? And again, us escalating a war that's eight years old already in a country world famous for three things, heroin, pomegranates, and felling and expelling world dominating empires in war, that's also not very inspiring. Problem from hell indeed. Joining us now is Dr. Leslie Gelb, who is President Emeritus of the Council on Foreign Relations and a former senior official in both the State Department and the Defense Department. His new book is called Power Rules, right. How Common Sense Can Rescue American Foreign Policy. Dr. Gelb, thank you so much for coming on the show. Good to be here. We are expecting an announcement from the President possibly next week about his overall goal, his overall strategy for Afghanistan. Have you timed this op-ed to try to dissuade him from, from escalating the war further? I timed it to try to get the people in the administration to think hard about what we really can achieve in Afghanistan and at what cost, because almost certainly he is going to up the ante, that is, more troops. And it's not just the 17,000 troops that he's already approved, but the military have on the table requests really for troop levels that could take us up to uh, 80,000, 90,000 U.S. troops. And, you know, three years from now, we can find ourselves in a quagmire. And basically what I wanted to do, Rachel, is to get the administration to think now, not three years from now, on what an alternative could be to stopping the terrorists who could conceivably come back to Afghanistan. How could we deal with it without occupying and fighting a war in that country for the next three years on top of the six we've already been there? In the short term, in terms of what to do now, do you disagree with the recent decision to send 17,000 more troops? Do you disagree with any expected forthcoming decision to, right. to, send, uh, uh, to send thousands more? See, that's a fair question because I don't disagree hmm. with the decision to send the 17,000 more, and I don't disagree with uh, President Obama's decision to try to talk to the Taliban. These things all make sense, but they make sense to me as part of a strategy of preparing friendly Afghans to fight for themselves and take care of themselves over the next two, three years, contain the Taliban and al-Qaeda threat, and build a coalition of neighbors to make sure they've got no place to run and hide thereafter. 
Traditionally, we've dealt with our enemies by containment and deterrence. And I believe we ought to take a look at trying to do that in Afghanistan rather than getting involved in another quagmire there. Conceptually, you are arguing that we should set our goals low so that they are attainable. I've heard President Obama and Defense Secretary Gates argue conceptually the same thing, but their idea of, of setting the bar low is something that you say is unattainable, this idea that we should prevent Afghanistan from being a place in which terrorists can operate. Do you, right. you think the U.S. needs to concede that Afghanistan could be a sanctuary for terrorists? Well, I think they need to concede that the Taliban is going to come back to power. You know, the Taliban are Pashtun. Pashtun is 60 percent of the population of Afghanistan. And they have support in that country. You know, right now, in the southern part of the country, they're winning the war. So, you know, they're going to be a part of Afghans' future, even though I don't like them. And they're going to be there. To get rid of them would involve an enormous cost, and we might probably won't be able to do it anyway. No one else has been able to defeat the Afghans on their own soil for more than a thousand years. So I want us to define the goal in a way that we reduce the risks of any serious terrorist threats from Afghanistan. And I think we can do that. But to say we have to ensure that there's no terrorist threat from there, or we have to eliminate the potential for using for terrorists using Afghan soil for attacks, that means staying there forever. And the fact of the matter is, Rachel, as you know, as you report, we already live with terrorist threats from Pakistan, from Yemen, uh, and from Somalia. We can get attacked from those places right now. And who is saying we ought to we ought to go in and occupy those countries and fight a ten year war? Sometimes it seems to me like we imply it's incredible, baroque, impressive, cerebral processes to figuring out how to win wars that are already underway, and we don't apply nearly the same effort to figuring out whether or not uh, it's worth it to even keep trying in terms of the costs. Yeah, we have to look at the alternative. We, we really do. I, I'm not faulting these people for the individual decisions they've made, but c Congress owes it to us to take a hard look at this. And President Obama owes it to the Afghans and to us to ask, is there another way of reasonably accomplishing this task? And that's the debate I want to make sure happens before we get into much further. Leslie Gelb, President Emeritus of the Council on Foreign Relations, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's really to nice to have there. you here. Thank you.